Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be answering a reader question and it is, should I buy a new leased Prius or should I buy a used Prius? So basically I got this question from a reader named Rania who lives in Orange County. She sent this it's an email to me and I thought it would make for a good video response. So today I'm gonna to be trying this out. Let me know what you think. And if you guys have any questions you'd like answered, just let me know. So to paint the picture, basically Rania tells me in her email that she's basically contemplating buying a Prius for the weekdays. She's already an Uber driver. She actually has an Odyssey, which is a minivan. So she's on Uber XL and she says, Basically, driving the Odyssey on the weekends is great. She's making lots of money, but on the weekdays, it's just not paying off. She's not getting enough requests. And with UberX, her car is a little too expensive for that um, since it does seat more passengers and doesn't get as good as gas mileage. So she doesn't think it's a very good UberX car. She says financially, it makes sense. She can go and get a $5,000 used Prius. Her husband has a small car, car dealership, so she can get a decent deal but she has a thing for brand new cars for mechanical reasons, cleanliness, and she'd rather spend the $300 a month as opposed to $5,000 for a used Prius. So basically the question is, should she go with, she's, if she's gonna do UberX on weekdays, should she go with the $5,000 used Prius or the $300 a month brand new leased Prius? So I get a lot of questions about uh, Plus and XL, and it is a little bit difficult to give specific advice in each for each market because I mean as I've discovered in my research and in some of my writing it is very hard to tell hey is there enough request volume on plus or select or XL or whatever these other variants of UberX we know that UberX is pretty decent in a lot of markets but it is hard to say whether it's worth it so if you already have a car that's on Uber XL or Uber Plus eligible, obviously that's the best situation because you don't need to spend any money to test it. But before giving up on XL, I do think there are a lot of things that you can do. So for example, this reader said that she was having trouble getting requests on weekdays, right, with her XL vehicle. Now, you have to really put yourself, so before you go and give up and buy a new car or a used car in the first place, I would put myself in the shoes of someone who's requesting an Uber XL, right? On weekends, Uber XL is great because you get a lot of those requests, all those all those Uber X drivers probably know when passengers are trying to cram five people into your car and you have to politely tell them no, they turn around and make them call an Uber XL. Right, and so that on weekdays, weeknights, Friday, Saturday nights, I think the Uber XL requests and even plus to some degree is pretty good. Um, it is those weekdays though, where during the middle of the day, you're not going to find many people who, for example, if they need to go to lunch or whatever errands people are doing on Uber during the middle of the day, you don't often find that six people are going to need to go or five people are going to need to go. But you do find opportunities with things like airport runs, for example. I know that I called an Uber XL when I just had my wife and I, but we had a bunch of luggage and we were worried that if we had a small little Uber X car, then our luggage wouldn't fit because we needed to take golf clubs, for example. So in that scenario, I might take an Uber XL and something like an airport run, right? So there's little opportunities that if you are driving XL, before you go and buy a new car, maybe you want to try some new times, think about, put yourself in the shoes of a rider who might be requesting an Uber XL. When would they request this ride? Where would they be going? Because you're right, if you're just sitting at your house or just sitting in some random area trying to get XL requests in the middle of the day, it might be a little slow. And that's what this reader seems to be experiencing. So, if you do decide that, hey, all right, um, whatever, this isn't working, I need to make it work um, with an UberX car, maybe I can switch to UberX with a Prius and I'll be able to make more money that way. So if you do decide to go that route, let's say this reader does decide to go that route and now she's deciding, hey, do I wanna do this brand new um, lease, lease Prius for $300 a month or do I wanna do a used Prius for $300? Five hundred or for five thousand dollars. So, if she's gonna just do X on weekdays, basically, basically, which car should she get? So, I would say for the three hundred dollar a month lease, it's definitely nice because you do get a brand new car. And she specifically mentioned that she doesn't want to worry about maintenance and she doesn't want to worry about some of those other items. And obviously, with a lease, you definitely get that. But there's also there's not a whole lot of return on your investment, right? Other than the satisfaction of driving a new car and not having to worry about with that. Because as we know how leases generally work, right? You pay a few years up front and then you have the option of buying the car once all the problems start to hit, right? <laughs> so, I mean, with leasing, it's definitely not a bad option. You do at least know your cost up front. You say, hey, I'm spending $300 a month on this lease. If you have good credit, you might be able to get a good good rate or whatever it is, how it works with the leases. And you know that you can get a fixed cost where with UberX, if you're buying a car, you really don't know what your exact monthly cost is till later down the road or when you buy or finance your car. So that's another benefit of leasing. But 
really, if you are going to go the leasing route, I think you really want to make sure that you get your money's worth, which is why I don't think leasing would make a lot of sense in this situation. Since Renia already has a car that she drives on the weekend, she has her XL vehicle that's doing really well, and not many drivers out there have that XL eligible vehicle, so she's already at an advantage there, but she needs something to fill in on those weekdays days, right? And if you go and lease a car, there's two days a week, two of the busiest days a week, basically, that you're not going to be able to use it because you're going to want to do that XL vehicle, right? So really, if you are going to go lease it, you have to think about it like, hey, I really want to get my money's worth. I want to drive as much as possible, as often as you can, because often leasing is going to be more of a temporary type solution. If you go with a traditional lease and you're going to lease the car for two or three years, or if you go to a company like Breeze that allows you to lease a brand new vehicle for $200 a week, which is obviously expensive or 179 a week, whatever they charge, um, which is obviously expensive. It's expensive to lease a car weekly because you end up paying close to $800 a month, $250 up front, but it's a great temporary solution. If you only are gonna be driving for a few months or if you wanna try out UberX, right? It's a lot less risk than going out and buying a car or leasing a car, right? So, and then also, of course, you really won't have any maintenance issues with a lease. So there's definitely benefits, but in this case, I actually think it makes more sense to buy a used Prius, especially if you have the money. Obviously, if you have the money to go and put a $5,000 payment down on a Prius, it sounds like she has a couple advantages because number one, she has the $5,000. And then number two, her husband owns a used car lot. So you might as well take advantage of that fact. You know you'll be able to get a great deal on a great car. And the other thing though that I like about a $5,000 Prius in this situation is that you're not gonna see a lot of depreciation. Right? And what I mean by that is since you're only going to be driving this on weekdays, probably not even five days a week, maybe three to five days a week, you're not putting going to be putting a ton of miles on the car and you've already bought it at a used price. So it's a used car. So you don't see that initial loss of value, right? When you buy a new car, you drive it off the lot, you know, you lose 20 to 30% of the value. So what I mean by you don't see a lot of depreciation loss is that with this used Prius at $5,000, let's say you go and run UberX for a year or two years or six months or whatever you do, when you go to resell that car, you're not gonna get much less than $5,000. Maybe you'll get three or $4,000. So you haven't really lost a whole lot of depreciation, even if you are putting a lot of miles on that car. Because especially with cars like Priuses, and I'm pretty partial to the Asian made cars, not just because I'm Asian, but (laughs) because I like Toyotas and I like Hondas and I've had really good experience with them too. My last car was my grandparents' Lexus, which is basically a Toyota. And my current car is a Lexus, which is also same maker as Toyota. And I found that as long as you're doing kind of the required oil changes and general type, very light maintenance, there's really not a whole lot of problems that come up. And I find that a lot of similar owners have told me the same thing. Whereas I know people with other foreign makers, if it's a German car, I mean, my wife's car is a German brand and she seems to always, not always, but she definitely seems to be having more problems than mine. And we actually have the same age car. Mine's a 2004 2004 and hers is 2004. So I really like a lot of these solid uh, Asian made Hyundais, Accord, Honda Accord, uh, Toyota Camry, Toyota Prius is obviously great because of the gas mileage. And so I'm a little biased towards the Toyota, but I think that they'll last till 200 or 300,000 miles very easily without you having to do major maintenance, like replacing a transmission or anything, you know, busting or breaking that's gonna be a thousand dollar job or two or three thousand dollar job because that's really the major risk with buying a used car is you really want to avoid any of those big, you don't want to spend $5,000 and then you have to pay 2000 for a new transmission because boom, right there off the bat, you're going to come out behind if you would have leased. So obviously some of this an- evidence is anecdotal, but I do think in this situation, a uh, used Prius is going to make the most sense because you can really go out there, take advantage of those weekday Uber X rates and you, you know, where your profit margins aren't going to be as high as on XL, but at the same time, the cost of operating your vehicle is going to be a lot lower because you, first of all, you didn't pay much for it. $5,000, if you can get a decent running Prius is not a lot. And then obviously, since you'll be getting such good gas mileage and we know that gas mileage is the driver's number one expense that'll be almost cut in half, right? If you're getting 50 miles per gallon or whatever Priuses, the model Prius you get um, ends up getting in gas mileage. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy my advice. If you have any questions you want answered on the YouTube channel, then uh, definitely let me know. And if you guys are just checking out the YouTube channel for the first time, definitely leave a comment, like the video, uh, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And we have tons more of content. If you guys like video content, we've got a 
tons of videos, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 videos, adding more two to three new videos every single week. So definitely look forward to hearing from you. All right, take care.